Dear brother and sister, the saints in Christ, welcome to a new episode. This is our third episode in this short series about uh, priesthood. Although uh, we got more than 17, I think even a lot more than that could be 20 something episodes about priesthood over the past like a few years. Anyway, uh, today's episode also I bring you more like another three fathers of the second and third century from their sayings from their writings we'll see that actually there is no sacramental or private priesthood as the so-called teacher of generations uh, claim before i start can you please like uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't and at the end of the episode if you think it worth it like give it like and if you can share it on your social media that would be great uh, before I start also the episode, I got like also a very like encouraging, life changing comment on episode number 137, so sorry, yes, 137 by someone, it's in Arabic, uh, the Arabic side of the, of the channel, and he says the following, may the Lord bless you, I already crossed over by the grace of God through your videos like he like he left the orthodox church and he came to christ not to a certain denomination so praise the lord for the technology for uh, that uh, we can expose all these lies all right uh, also i would like to uh, explain something that uh, in the law there is like a, a rule says if the text is found the diligence is invalid like if there is a text says you something so there is no need like to try to squeeze something to extract like anything i give you i, I tell you what I, what what i mean by that in episode number 197 i brought to you that from the new testament issued 2017 approved by pope Tadros, and it is arabic and coptic and you found in the Coptic language itself, in the Coptic translation that's approved in the Coptic church, there is no priesthood, like sacramental priesthood. We find the priesthood only to Lord Jesus and to the believers. But those who were appointed as leaders of the New Testament churches were called what? Elders or presbyters, but not priests. And you cannot say presbyter is, is priest. No, presbyter, Presbyterian church is not a tradition a church. It's like it's uh, evangelical church. All right. So because you have the thickest, so there is no like place for diligence, like to go around the bush as option would did, and all his generations uh, of uh, bishops and priests and servants so in the church follow like the threat ah actually when the lord uh, like breathed in the faces of the disciples uh, on the night of uh, the uh, of uh, the uh, sunday night of the resurrection uh, and he told he told them uh, accept or receive the holy spirit whatever you, uh, you forgive the sins and all that stuff this means priesthood he, now this is he is Diligence trying to find something. No, you have the text never ever been appointed as leaders of the New Testament and called the priest. No, it was not. And even those ones that he breathed in their faces, if this is in John 20, go to 21. They actually lost the hope again and they went back to catch fish. And in the book of Acts chapter 4, they kept all the time like praying in the, uh, in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. So they were not and we found also saint peter himself calls himself elder and the ones that always addressing them and we saw also saint john called himself twice elder or presbyter so what are you talking about so actually got the text so you try to go around the wishes ah jesus respected the priesthood when he asked the leper to go and show himself to the priest this means priesthood in the new testament no, it's all lies. They do breathe lies. They do actually lead you astray. They are blind leaders, leading you blind as well. Anyway, so let's now, uh, so that was episode number 197. Should be end of story. However, I brought to you last 
episode number 198, two of the fathers, Justin the martyr and Irenaeus, the father of the ecclesiastical tradition. And you find actually they call them like elders and only they call the priests Lord Jesus Christ and the believers. Today also I bring you three more fathers. All right, very famous ones. All right. So let's now start with the last. So we'll take now the third father. We've taken two last episodes. Which one will take? Polycarpus. Polycarp. Polycarp actually is a disciple of Saint John the Beloved. He is from 69 and 156. So second century. He wrote an epistle to Philippi. So in the introduction itself, in the introduction itself, he says exactly the way John actually addressed his first and second epistles, sorry, or second and third epistles, second and third epistles. Anyway, so what Saint Polycarp, ad when he addresses the epistle to the Philippians, in the introduction, what did he say? He said, the, he says, Polycarp and the presbyters, he did not say the priests, the presbyters with him to the church of God, Sojourning at sojourning at Philippi, mercy to you and the peace from God Almighty and from the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior be multiplied. So he called the what Polycarp and the presbyters. He did not say the priests or the archbishop, uh, or something like that. All right. So this is in the introduction. Okay, in the sixth chapter. The address of the sixth chapter itself says the duties of presbyters and others. So again, he did not say the duties of the priests, but, but the presbyters. So this is the title of chapter six. And after that, we'll take like, uh, like one paragraph of it. And they let the presbyters be compassionate. Do not say the priests. And merciful to all, bringing back those that wander visiting all the sick and not neglecting the widow the orphan or the poor but always providing for that which is becoming in the sight of god and and man here we go so we're addressing like everyone as presbyter not priests okay so that was the third father now number four or fourthly origin in the origin third century 184 to 258 uh, again, Celsus, book number six, chapter 40. It's a bit long, but uh, I'll summarize it in the beginning, then I'll read it. All right, so someone's uh, not say, Ah, oh, you have taken it out of the context because someone tried to say, I oh, take it out of the context. Oh, get me some text with uh, tell me what you what you reckon about the introduction. Sorry, about the your your Coptic. Translation also been taken uh, out of context. So anyway, let's read about this. So in the paragraph that we read from uh, Oregon, uh, sorry, yes, Origin, uh, six book number six again is Celsus chapter forty. There was some rumors about Christians that actually they eat inf like that the flesh of infants and also uh, they also commit like adultery together like. Anyways, we really don't understand it. And of course, he says, actually, he is proving now that this is definitely a uh, false accusation. So what the what uh, origin uh, said in this chapter in that book? After these things, <coughs> Celsus or Celsus, whichever you would like to, uh, to pronounce it, to pronounce it, appears to me to act like those who, in their intense hatred of the Christians, maintain in the presence of those who are utterly ignorant of Christian faith that they have actually ascertained, ascertained that Christians devour the flesh of infants and they give themselves without restraint to sexual intercourse with their own with their women. Now, as the statements have been condemned as falsehoods invented against the Christians, and this admission made by the multitude and those altogether 
aliens to our face. So would the following statements of Celsus be found in to be uh, Calvinists invented against the Christians, where he says that he has seen in the hands of certain presbyters belonging to our faith. So now this, this is the, the whole paragraph that I wanted like to, uh, to bring this. Presbyters belong to our faith. Barbarous books containing the names of marvelous do of do doings of demons asserting further that these presbyters of our faith professed to do no good but all that was calculated to injure human beings. Would indeed that all that is said by Celsus against the Christians was of such a nature as to be refuted by the multitude who have ascertained by experience that such things are untrue, seeing, seeing that most of them have lived as neighbors with the Christians and they have not even heard of the exercise of any of such alleged practices. All right, so you understand he was talking about like some accusation, but my, my, my main like object of this that he mentioned to, twice that the presbyters uh, were in charge of the church in the third century not priests all right so actually uh, I, uh, presbyters not uh, not priests also so this is the first quote second quote i'll take it from his it's again again a Celsus, but book eight chapter 34 now he is going to mention the word the priest okay but with whom otherwise my, my some people might say ah priest and the presby no 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 they are different you know presbyterian church is not a traditional church they don't have priesthood they don't have uh, sacraments uh, all that stuff anyway so again as we mentioned now same uh, origin again celsus book 8 chapter 34 and to him to whom we offer first fruits we also send up our prayers having a great high priest so with this one lord jesus of course that is passed into the heaven jesus the son of god and we hold fast this profession as long as we live this is hebrews 4 14. so he knows very well when and who is a priest and when and who is a presbyter so the leaders of the church presbyters and who is the the priest he is uh, referring to lord jesus christ himself and of course you know also for the old all uh, believers okay the fifth father and i think this is more it's so so more than enough now we come to clement of alexandria this is also like second from 150 up to 215 a.d so basically, most of his life was in the second century. I will take also like two quotes. Clement of Alexandria, number, number the first quotation, Exhortation to the Heathen. Chapter 12. What does he say in this one? This Jesus, who is eternal, the one great high priest. So he differentiate between high priest and the presbyter, I will say. All right, of the one God and of the Father, praise for sorry, praise for and exhort men. So he's describing Lord Jesus as high priest. Okay, also same Clement of Alexandria in his book, another book called the Fragments, comments on the first epistle of John. First epistle of John. He's going, he is like explaining, but he put a comment. I know it's a commentary on, on, on the Bible. Whatever, sorry, what therefore he says from the beginning, uh, the, this, epis, the, the, uh, the, uh, this epistle starts like that, from the beginning. All right, he's going to explain that now, the beginning. Now, what, what, what is the comment of Clement of Alexandria on the verse from the beginning? He is saying the following. The presbyter explained to this effect that the beginning of generation is not separated from the beginning of the creator. But notice now he is referring to John 
as the presbyter. I read the whole thing again so you, you, you get it. All right, comments on first epistle of John by Clement of Alexandria. What therefore he says, he here is John, from the beginning, the presbyter explained to this effect is that the beginning of the generation is not separated from the beginning of the creator. So this means what? He actually referring to John as a presbyter, not as a high priest or a priest. Arch erefs or erefs as presbyter, not as priest or high priest. Yeah, I, we have seen he referred in the first quote to Jesus as high priest, but to John as presbyter. And in fact, as you've seen before, John himself referred to himself twice as presbyter. The presbyter to Gaius, the presbyter to uh, Kyrie. Right? And also we've seen also last episode that St. Peter himself refers to himself as a presbyter. And the, the ones that actually he was talking to were presbyters or elders. And don't tell me because of, ah, he, he is a modest, he is humble. No, 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 no. He writes what the Holy Spirit actually leads him to write. So the, the, the Holy Spirit wanted us to understand. So don't argue about this. All right. Also, let's watch now something really, something, ex it's really, I would say, silly. Uh, every now and then you find one of those priests that try to come with something to showing you how the dignity and the honor of the priest. And after this, no, no, it is not for us. Uh, it's the priesthood. So we listen to one of those lies. As usual, they are breathing lies. This is a very little statement, by the way, to what the, those, uh, those guys are actually doing. So let's watch this short clip and come back again. عشان كده مرة مرات كان في أحد الأباء في البرية وكان ربنا مديله استنارة إن هو يشوف الملاك اللي ربنا عينه ليه وقت المعمودية ربنا لما بنتعمد بيدينا ملاك يرفع صلوات عننا ويرفع صلواتنا يقول كان بيشوف الملاك ده وكان بيتكلمه كان بتصاحب عليه يعني وبعدين الأب البطرك اداله نعمة الكهنوت وفجأة ما لقاش الملاك ده جنبه فبص كده لقى الملاك واقف وراه فقال له ايه في ايه حصل ايه انت زعلان مني قال له لا لا حينما كنت انسان عادي راهب عادي كنت بمشي جنبك وام لكن ما ان اخذت نعمة الكهنوت صرت انا خلفك ويوجد ملاك اخر للكاهن طبعا مش لاني كاهن بقول الكلام ده لان الكرامة مش في اشخاصنا الكرامة في الردة الكرامة في الكهنوت نفسه الكهنوت ده مش بتاعي الكهنوت بتاع المسيح in this clip, two lies at least. The first one, when he mentioned, uh, there is, uh, uh, when we get baptized, there is an angel is assigned to each one. Absolutely a lie. From where did he get, he gets, he gets this? They love lies, and people they love hearing those lies. Believe me, they don't like the word of God. They work, they love all these fairy tales and stuff. Anyway. But the focus is when he mentioned that, ah, uh, yes, uh, this man that was in the uh, desert is like a holy man and all those monks and he should be like that. And all the time, uh, this uh, angel that was assigned to him when he was uh, baptized, he was, uh, they were friends and talked to each other and all the time the angel is in front of him. But when he got uh, the grace or, or, of priesthood, which priesthood are you talking about? He's a, he's a liar. He doesn't know the Bible, this guy. Now the angel goes and uh, walks behind him because of the priesthood. Where about in the Bible this happened to Aaron, for example? It's all, dear brothers and sisters, it's all fairy tales. It's all lies. And the, unfortunately, you love this stuff. The, the, the majority love this stuff. And all, this is what you hear on the pulpit in the Coptic Church. It's all uh, stories not from the Bible. Yeah, they take you away from the Bible and tell the, about the tradition and the uh, uh, verbal tradition and whatever and all this. My goodness. Anyway, okay. Today also, I have a spiritual word. A spiritual word, all right? Some people sometimes say, okay, uh, we've got time for this. We read like two, like two verses from... Isaiah chapter 55, uh, verse 10 and 11. So let's read those two verses and we'll have some comments on this. The Lord says, As for the rain comes down 
and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sour and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what i please and it shall prosper in the thing for which i sent it all right so what i would like to comment on this is the following so the lord in the first verse says as the rain comes down snow from heaven and they, 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 will, they will never go back again but they will achieve but in this verse achieve some very positive thing what is it goes to the land bring forth like fruit and vegetable for people to eat and also to drink good but also on the other hand which i would like to comment on this at the same time the lord could use the same thing the rain and the snow to come down not for good but to to execute judgment like what happened during the flood for example all right so what happens now whatever the lord actually sends will achieve something could be positive could be negative all right so as as we just mentioned the water might come and give water and we like uh, fruit and vegetables and uh, we can also drink so it's very positive but also could be exactly the same elements sent for executing judgment against people could be against the whole creation all right so now we come to verse 11 so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void it will it will do something could be positive could be negative could be one word two people like listen to it or hear it one will take it seriously and will be following the lord submitting his love to the lord the other one wouldn't so actually what what i mentioned some episodes before the word of god that does not soften your heart in fact will harden your heart so the word of god will never go back to him void it will do something will execute something could be positive could be negative and it's eventually up to you what i would like to come from this is the following some people now they still hanging ah oh, and even sometimes they be very rude to me because i don't know the bible and i'm against the church and i have hatred to the church and i have all this rubbish all this rubbish no absolutely not the lord uses me like to open your eyes after more than 40 41 years actually serving in the in that so-called church so what i'd like to say the word of god you hear it from anywhere on the tv from the bible when you read the bible or from me if it doesn't soften your heart it actually will be hardening your heart so what happens time after time after time you're done and then you might hear from the lord what's in the book of luke chapter 13 cut it down three years now i come to this tree you remember the fig tree that was having no fruit what happened i i've got i keep coming or i kept coming three years to this tree and doesn't bring forth the fruit cut it why do you misuse or not you uh, like the, the land do something better so dear brother and sister don't undermine uh, the word of god when you hear it if it doesn't actually benefit you it will be against you on the judgment day i'll tell you something that used to be in egypt ages ago after year six there is a big exam for kids to move to like uh, high school so if you fail first uh, time yeah you give you another chance you go second time if you fail second time you repeat the whole year again then you go for a third one now if you fail third time they tell you that's it you cannot you you are not fitting for academic so they tell you you go out and you find a job for yourself like any trade like you, 
like, like to be your profession or the way that you, you make your own living. And they say you have executed all possibilities of success because you failed three times in this thing. So that if you go to high school, you will be no good at all. So, they, so the Lord will be after you like that. You hear the word, you accept it or not. You don't accept it that's fine he will send you another one and another one and another one and another one and actually each time you reject it actually your heart becomes more hardened more and more hardened so on the judgment day you have executed all your chances so this is exactly the same so when you hear the so the word of god when it comes will definitely will never go void and say oh, i didn't do anything no it, it, the word of god did something could be softening your heart or hardening your heart. And now it's entirely up to you. All right? Now, if you think the episode was a like, give it a like. And if you can share it on your social media, it would be great. And unless the Lord comes, we'll meet again in another episode. May the Lord bless you.